Welcome students, we are starting this new course titled Statistics. Now this course is very important for people who would like to pursue data sciences, for people who want to pursue data analysis, for people who are interested in pursuing machine learning, for people who want to get into the world of AI. Statistics is the indispensable. The best word to use is indispensable subject. Meaning is you can just place very very important. Now without the subject it is totally impossible to get into any of these areas. Now you might be wondering why am I insisting these areas because we are living or I would say we are gravitating slowly into the world of uh, big data and the term used is big data analytics and this area offers tremendous job opportunities and job potentials. Now of course if we have to live in this world we have to make a living and that living shouldn't be a struggle. In other words it shouldn't be survival state. It should be thriving state. So that is my wish to anybody or everybody who are interested in, in making a mark. So you need to thrive. And to thrive, you have to choose, in other words, you have to select your subjects very carefully, right? There's no point in uh, spending hard-earned money to learn something which is on the verge of being annihilated or becoming an antique. What if somebody is spending, say, all their fortune in learning Greek or Latin. Okay, once upon a time these two languages they were ruling the roost. But now what if somebody is spending all their fortune in learning Latin? You know what I am trying to infer. Okay, I will mention that. Let that form the source of motivation in knowing or in gravitating towards learning the subject. So foremost it is imperative for us to First know what is statistics. It is a branch of mathematics. That's very important. It is a branch of mathematics that deals with the collection of data So I will be just using collection so you can add in of data. So it deals with the collection, organizing, organizing. So in this case collecting, organizing and followed by analyzing and subsequently interpretation. So it involves data collection, collecting data organizing the data, analyzing the data and finally interpreting the data. So all of these things, the four things, collecting, organizing, analyzing, interpreting, all of these four things, they form what is called a statistics. So have that in mind. Now having mentioned to you what is statistics, you will have to know the different types of statistics that are available. Types of statistics. Now foremost you got to know this that there is some uh, area called as theoretical statistics and applied statistics. Now in theoretical statistics you got what is called as mathematical statistics. I will be just using mathematical stats and you've got pure stats and then you got what is the theory of statistics. 
So all of these things they fall under the category of theoretical statistics. Under applied statistics, we got what is called as descriptive. statistics and inferential statistics now what we are focused is applied statistics now you may be wondering why is there a need to learn theoretical statistics now it is imperative to understand everything that we apply here actually came from here. Once upon a time they used to say cryptography has got no utility. Cryptography. When I say once upon a time I'm talking about say 50 years ago. Cryptography has got no utilization at all. Today without cryptography there is nothing or there is no area called cyber security. Without cryptography let me reinstate that there is no area called cyber security. Without cyber security, you cannot have secure internet communication. So your internet is secure because of this area, cryptography. And cryptography is a direct byproduct of number theory. So everybody who once upon a time when number theory was taught in the universities, they used to say it has got no applications. So without, as I mentioned to you, this area of number theory plays a huge role in computer sciences. Now why am I insisting computer sciences? Because computer sciences has become a, a key player in, in today's world. And there are several areas of computer sciences which offer huge job opportunities. It is imperative, I, you would be wondering why am I mentioning job opportunities. Any subject that you study, you should focus on the subject's potential to get you a high paying job. That's critical. As Plato once said, uh, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, but application of knowledge is even more powerful. Right? Knowledge is power, but application of knowledge is even more powerful. So, you have to study an area where the application is there. Now, of course, when this subject, this came in first, when this subject was actually being taught, a lot of people thought this has got limited applications. But apparently, today we see, without theoretical statistics, there wouldn't be the tools that are required for us to perform descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So, so much so. Now, I have given you what is statistics. I have given you the branches of statistics. I have given you why you need to study statistics. Now, coming out of it, why statistics has gained uh, so much importance? Why it has become so much importance? Or so much important? Why? Because of this particular reason, it helps us to derive knowledge from large sets, from large data sets and use this knowledge, yeah, you will use the word apply and apply this knowledge in making decisions, right? And these decisions are made in areas like business, market research, in uh, banking and finance, and the story goes on. There is no limit. The story simply goes on. Okay, so having mentioned to you that, let me now give you the vocabulary is required. So I hope the content that I have just given you so far is provided with good explanation that you can understand. So if there is any issues with regard to understanding whatever I have just mentioned, please put them in the comment section. I will look into it. Okay, so having mentioned that, let me now go to the all important phase of our learning. Now, this is the very important phase, vocabularies. 
Now, in any language, as I mentioned to you, statistics is also a language because mathematics is a language. They say mathematics is the language of the heavens because everything that you see and around you in nature as a mathematical model embedded and you you need to do further reading and research and you will know what i'm meaning so having mentioned to you that as a, we are progressing we need the basic vocabularies i'm going to give you all of the vocabularies that you need after which i'm going to categorize the vocabularies in the areas that they fall in when i say areas that they fall in we are focusing on descriptive and inferential statistics so the list of vocabularies that you are going to be learning is cumulative in nature after i have given you the definition i will categorize them where exactly these vocabularies fall whether they fall into this bucket with the title descriptive statistics or into this bucket with the title called inferential statistics so having mentioned to you that let me start the first term that you will have to familiarize is called as data now what is data data is nothing but raw information you can either state it as raw information or raw facts now what is the meaning of this this means you cannot use this to understand anything say suppose somebody is giving you this number say 9189 91 what can you understand from these three numbers is there any explanation for that nobody can infer what these numbers are some might say these are scores others might say these are the number of push ups that the person takes every morning and some other person might say these are the total savings that has occurred because of using a certain app so so many conclusions can be drawn and why are we drawing all these conclusions because these are all raw data or i would say raw information there isn't any title on that that these information mean so and so right so i have mentioned to you that this raw information is what is being collected this is what is being collected or given to you this is what is being collected so i have that in mind so whenever you you as a data scientist you have to do some analysis or make some inferences this is what you will be getting and it is your duty to synthesize the data okay so that is the definition of data so whenever we talk about data we are only talking about raw information next to all important point is population now this is very important now population is as what it means population population of a city population of a state population of a region it can be anything so when we talk about population we talk about the entire group that you are interested in so what are you interested in for you are interested in drawing a conclusion why are we to target the population because that is the entire study if a population of town is say 1 million we cannot be analyzing the entire 1 million people what do we do we take in a small sample and that would be the next term and then if the sample is responding to our analysis then we make an inference so so much so for that so population means what the entire group that you are interested in drawing a conclusion about that's very important i need to use the word about so what is the next term the next term is sample now we don't have the time or the money to perform a study on the entire population that's never going to happen that's just not possible why do i say it's just not possible you take for example the banking system now people say investing or putting money in the bank is good but if you take a population not everybody will have a bank account and it is also not wise to think that everybody in a town or everybody in a city or everybody in a state will have a bank account because people have their own choices so that is why what do we do we take a sample so how do we define a sample a sample is nothing but a subset 
of the population that you are interested in that when I say you it means you as a data scientist that you are interested so when you say interested in well, why are you interested in because you wanted to perform an analysis so that is the reason you are interested in okay so the next important term that you will have to know is what is called as a variable now this variable is not like the one that you see in math which is x y and z right though the term is little bit similar to x y z but this particular term that we use in statistics has got a greater reach or greater meaning so what exactly does it mean so whenever we use the term variable we are looking for uh, special characteristics i can state it like this it can be a characteristic it can be also mentioned as a feature or an attribute or a quality that is present in the sample and it can be measured that's critical that's that's very important say so for example you are taking a sample size of 200 young people say boys and girls so we will categorize them as boys and girls and you are giving an IQ test a certain IQ test you are giving based on two subjects say one subject is say alpha I'm not naming the subject I'm just naming it as alpha and the other subject is beta it's found that most of the boys are scoring very high in alpha whereas most of the girls are scoring very high in beta so apparently there is a characteristics that is present in B as well as in A a certain characteristics in other words the characteristics that is present in B allows them to fare well in this particular test whereas that same characteristics that is present in B is unable to handle this whereas on the other hand if you were to see the group G group of girls a certain characteristics is present inside them that allows them to fare well in beta but not in alpha so that feature I am interested or you are interested or the data science person is interested in and that has to be measured so this is just an illustration as I mentioned to you there can be several differentiations when it comes to research okay so we talked about this variable now let me move on under variable we got the following types that we will have to know so when we talk about the variable we got several types under variables so these are let me just uh, name them as categorical categorical this is the first type you will have to know categorical variable now what exactly does this mean this means a variable or a feature as I mentioned to you in the definition what exactly a variable means so I will be utilizing the term variable a variable that represents say a certain category so I will just mention it as categories so when I talk about categories are you married say marital status the person is married the person is never married the person is single these are the three categories that I am placing here for this category variable and then when you come to the specifying say for example you are taking gender our study is on boys and girls boys and girls male and the female so this is also a categorical variable moving on I have just mentioned to you about the categorical variable we, we got number six number six is quantitative variable now the word itself mentions quantitative variable so what does that variable do this variable represents a numeric quantity 
a numeric value or i would say quantity a numeric value example the salary that a person is drawing for example there is a girl who wants to marry this guy and she wants to perform a data analysis say she is getting the first suitor right this man is working in networks networking engineer and there is a second suitor this man is working say this man is working in cyber security and there is a third guy who is working in ai the third man it's a very popular movie the third man he is working in ai of course all of these three suitors are getting fat pays network engineer cyber security ai all of them are getting as fat pays but there will be one person whose pay will be definitely great and you know whose pay is that so this salary is a quantitative variable again you can have another quantitative variable called age in certain jobs they make it their mission or their purpose to analyze the age of the incoming applicants for example you are taking in people to secure the assets in your organization so you need security personnel so in that case you look you will look for age what age group that they are so again it is a quantitative variable now so far i have given you the vocabularies up onto quantitative variable we will continue our class again